fall on. When my hand goes down, you're when absolutely your right. Down. You got it. Okay. Good morning and good afternoon. This is Good Morning Santa Paula. I'm Peggy Kelly, and today I'm interviewing Santa Paula City Manager Dan Singer, uh, who's been very, very busy with many, many issues that are stemming from COVID-19. It's really become something that unfortunately is, is the, of course, the main concern for all of us, but also our city government. So, Dan, um, any, any impacts on Santa Paula with the new state orders? Well, the governor has uh, kind of ratcheted up a little bit his mm -hmm. insistence on closing beaches and state parks. Um, it, it really was in reaction to this last weekend when um, members of the public started to enjoy the beautiful weather we were having and right. trying to get some reprieve from, from it. Uh, in, in some ways, I'm glad we're not a coastal town because we didn't have mm -hmm. those issues to deal with. Right. Uh, so, you know, the, the biggest concern is that there's, uh, a, I think, a bit of tension between what, what we're doing at the local level and at the county level versus what the governor is saying. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there, there's a, obviously we all want to be in this together and, and respect those orders. And yet, and yet each community has, has different, uh -huh. um, different circumstances. I was under the impression, though, too, that Ventura did pretty well with the beaches because they had them heavily patrolled. Yes. And, um, so, so that always helps. But then again, too, you know, there's that misconception that you look at Redondo Beach and that must be all the beaches. And I know they did really have some yeah. other problems out there at some of the beaches as far as the overcrowding and that. But is he going to try to um, uh, stop the beaches being open here in Santa Paula? I, well, not, 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 not the beaches, county. you know, um, yeah. although That's if we had one, I think he would try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I think the biggest issue is just uh, whether there's large, you know, kind of larger gatherings, whether that's on parks or trails, open spaces, beaches, whatever. And mm -hmm. so we're continuing to monitor our parks on a daily basis, and I have to reiterate again that our public has been really very, very cooperative. Um, you, you've, you've seen it yourself. You reported it in the newspaper, mm -hmm. you know, the, the birthday party celebrations yes. that are so you know, drive-bys. Yes. And um, instead of having a bouncy house in the, in the park and enjoying the day. And so I just urge the public to continue that, that diligence and, um, and, and keep at it because it's definitely paying off. We, we have seen an increase in cases here. Um, we're we're now you know in the double digits, but for the most part, Santa Paula is doing really well. And I just encourage people to to keep keep that up. I think there is light at the end of the tunnel, and and I know the county is looking at uh, revisions as as early as the middle of May. And that's revisions as far as maybe soft softer openings or more more retail openings. Or Correct. And one openings. of the things that the governor did was lay out uh, kind of a, a four yeah, stage just plan just towards reopening. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's my impression that that stage two would be the next step would include restaurants and other businesses being able to open, provided that they were doing it in a manner that was consistent with the state's guidelines. And the social distancing, et cetera. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, what um, have there? I know we had an increase in local cases. I guess we're up to 14 now as far we, as the coronavirus goes. We are. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, it's hard to say what why we suddenly had a spike. But overall, the countywide numbers have flattened. They've actually gone down. Mm -hmm. The recovery rates have gone up and the fatality rates have been pretty darn steady. Yes. And um, so every day that we see those statistics and see them change and grow, you know, the thing you're looking at is, are people recovering and are people dying? And, and that's really not not been too bad. Um, you know, so I, I'm hopeful that that continues. Well, like they say, 80 percent of people that could have COVID might not show any symptoms at all or just very, very minor symptoms. So Correct. that's why it's important to stay um, so so diligent as it were. Now, crimes, are we having, a, I know that 
areas of reporting an increase in domestic violence, I guess also in car thefts and things like that. Where, how yeah. do we depend on our crime statistics? We, I, unfortunately, we have not been immune from, from that. Uh, I think one of the primary causes is the early release from a lot of the uh, jails and prisons. And so we have people now back on the streets that really would have still been incarcerated uh, if this COVID matter wasn't with us. Um, add to that the fact that there's you know new issues that police are dealing with, including intervening with you know large events or parties or visiting businesses aren't complying, mm -hmm. and um, and it it has definitely had an impact. It's not been helpful to our overall crime statistics. Our department's doing a great job. We've shifted our model so that there's more folks that are out on the street. And um, part of that was because, of course, with schools closed, our school resource officers were available to oh, put true. out on beat. Uh -huh. Our motor officer kind of moved to patrol. A lot of our detectives have too. So there's a, a helpful shift that's gone on, uh, but it, it uh, really also means we need the community's cooperation in reporting crimes before they happen and uh, letting us know when they think uh, there's something that needs our attention. Well, you know, several uh, police officers and chiefs in the past have always said that they'd rather that you call because you think something's wrong and you're and and you're wrong. But because if you didn't call and there was something wrong, then that's then that's really the problem. So they always urge people not to be embarrassed to call because uh, they'll be glad to say, "Oh, there's nothing wrong here." So yeah. you know that that works out. But still, and I agree, it's it's yeah. not now. I'm also uh, looking at a note here. Very sad subject, budget cuts. What are we looking at? What's the city looking at with budget cuts as far yeah. as, and, and service cuts? Because right. we well, all know that, that everybody's income is stifled at this point. Yeah, and a, as you know, the, um, you know, recreation programs are canceled. We're doing everything we can creatively to try and support activities for our youth and our seniors, mm -hmm. um, including, of course, the meal program. But yeah. uh, things like that have come to a grinding halt. So there are effects on, on services. We're contemplating uh, the cancellation of summer camps because of the nature of those being large gatherings for, for our kids mm -hmm. and just not seeing that that's going to be appropriate by June or July. Right. Um, but we're, we're looking at a decline in revenues that's uh, about 8% of our overall general fund. To put that in some perspective of our $18 million budget, mm -hmm. uh, looking at about a $1.2, $1.3 million drop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If if we were to go into a budget year knowing we had to cut 8%, th that would be painful. But the challenge here is we have to come up with that 8% with only two months left in our fiscal year. Wow. Which makes it even tougher. Yeah, now, we do, plan for this. Yes. Yeah, so we do have some um, un unallocated um, monies. They're not really reserves. They're, they're monies that weren't spent, especially out of Measure T. And we're going to ask the council next week to dip into those. Not fully, because I want to make sure we have some cushion going into next fiscal year, which starts in July. Um, and that's a budget we're working on right now. So I would say, you know, close to half of the um, shortfall that we have, we may be able to make up that way. The other half, we're going to have to make up with cuts. And we've identified a good 300,000 in, in uh, reduction of spending between now and the end of the year. That still leaves us two or $300,000 short. Mm -hmm. So the finance director and our management team and I are working right now on where else we can effectuate that change, but it will have to be on, you know, on the uh, personnel side of the ledger because that's our largest expense. Isn't it about that we'll, your budget is personnel costs? A, a huge amount. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. eight, almost 80 percent. Okay. So yeah. we, we're, we're looking at, I've already authorized freezing any open positions. We're um, not going to, you know, fill those the rest of this year and mm -hmm. probably months into next fiscal year. We may be looking at uh, some furloughs which would reduce pay for employees, but uh, still obviously allow them to keep their jobs. Right. Um, we're, we'll be suspending some other perks that would cost cost us money that uh, that we hope we can save on. 
because my, you know, my number one priority is trying to not have to lay anyone off. If, if I expected this was a long-term recessionary issue, layoffs might be necessary like they were back in the 2008 recession. Mm -hmm. um, we, we hope that this is really, uh, you know, the economy was strong going into this. So we hope that this is a short-lived situation, even if the recovery takes a while, that there's going to be an ability to rebound. So I, I hate to let people go and, and then have the, the pain and suffering that comes with that only then to you know, be in a position in three or four months to hire people back. Right. So we're trying to avoid anything that dramatic. Are you talking about perhaps a reduction in hours or just like working three weeks a month instead of a full month or? Yeah, so we're, we're looking at a couple of models. One is, uh, for example, to, to close to the public on some days, then have people off. Mm -hmm. Uh, another is to give people a bank of leave time, but that would be unpaid leave mm -hmm. so that we would take it out of paychecks over the course of the year, but then mm -hmm. they could use that time off at their, you know, at their discretion. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so those are some techniques we're looking at. Mm -hmm. How about an overall salary reduction? Has there been any talk of that? Well, the furloughs are are. For all intents and purposes, they are a salary yeah, reduction. Sure. What the, yes. Yeah, what the employee gets in exchange is they're not asked to work. Yeah. So you're right, that's a different, different than just a cut. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. So let's say you do a 5% cut and people still come to work for 40 hours. In this case, we would say it's a 5% cut, but you're mm -hmm. working 5% less. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's really, I, 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 don't, I don't envy anybody. I don't envy anybody decision makers statewide or county or city or whatever, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, and you know, the biggest disappointment is that uh, local governments so far have been left mm -hmm. out of, of any rescue. Um, the know. federal government and the state government haven't seen fit to help us out with this revenue loss, even though they essentially created it. Yeah. So it's true. very mm -hmm. discouraging. I know that um, Congresswoman Brownlee has gone to bat for us. She's voted to support funding for local governments. And I, I want to express appreciation to her office for the outreach they've done. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, it hasn't resulted in anything. I, I hope it still does. If it did, it would really alleviate some of the pressure we're under. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's terrible because you are the cities the men in the middle, as it were, you know, just not getting anything from the top or the bottom. As it were. Yeah. Well, I'm really sorry to hear that. Well, hopefully yeah. things are gonna things are gonna change change up. Do you think people? How, how do you think people are reacting now? Do you think they're looking looking the shocks worn off? Do you think they're looking? Do you think they're more understanding if we have to start going through like cuts or things like that, or if services are reduced? I know when people hear services reduced, sometimes yeah. they don't realize. Well, that doesn't particularly mean they're going to be cutting the police department. Right. Yeah, I mean, and you know, I want to be careful not to be whining about our budget. You know, uh -huh. the whole community is suffering from this. The whole country mm -hmm. oh, is yeah. suffering from this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's a lot of people that don't even have work right now or have put that's their true. their heart and soul and all their pocketbook into a local business that's, mm -hmm. you know, maybe on the brink of having to close permanently. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that there's um, an opportunity as a community for us to continue to support one another. I've seen great examples of that um, in helping out wherever is needed. And, and I do think that we will get through this and we'll be, we'll be stronger as a result. Um, the consequence in the short run is that, uh, you know, people are gonna continue to get more and more frustrated, especially as the weather gets nicer. And I do worry about kind of civil unrest and how long people can really afford to have this continue and I don't I don't know that there's a magic number to that I think we're already seeing you know protests and and yes some of that I think it will only grow over time if we don't have a, an exit strategy in place mm -hmm. that people can see being uh you know executed mm -hmm. but so, I guess that they have to keep uppermost in mind though a lot of that all depends upon controlling COVID-19 that's right so right. as soon as COVID-19, if, if it went up, then, then we'd be right back where we started from. 
Mali. We still, yeah, we still have significant significant deaths across the country, mm -hmm. um, including here in California. And uh, I think everyone understands the magnitude of of this virus and the need to try and control it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, any anything that you would like to end with, Dan? Any any thoughts or, you know, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and we appreciate you taking the time to come on and talk to the community is basically what you're doing. And I know you've been a, a great communicator, as it were, even though I think Thank that you. title's been used before. But anyway, you can, yeah. you can have it for a while. Yeah. But, no, uh, I do appreciate it. And I appreciate the, the cooperation uh, that we've seen in the community. Um, we're we're still, you know, government is still moving ahead. We're still working on our street management program. Mm -hmm. See a lot of paving and uh, other things going on starting the month of May. Um, we're going to have a number of projects that are still continuing despite COVID. So I don't want people to lose faith that Santa Paula is not still mighty. Yes. Although I know that's I know that's stolen from somewhere. <laughs> Mighty Santa Paula, yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. Well, I know that I think there's really a, I'm very proud that everybody is is fairly tolerant of what's going on because they know everybody's going through it too, you know, but it is frustrating yeah. and, it, and it is, and it is scary on different levels. So we all, we all do need each other to go ahead and, and a mighty good attitude. Well, yes. Okay, yes, Dan, well, so good. always, always a pleasure. We appreciate you coming on and updating everybody. Um, Please, please, everybody out there in the audience, don't forget, we, we're trying to live stream this today. We also have this archived on KADYTV.com. They archive all the Good Morning Santa Paula shows. And if you haven't yet already, and why not, be sure to subscribe. And we'd appreciate it. And we, we'll continue to bring you breaking news about Santa Paula, which, of course, is the center of our universe. So thank you again, Dan. You take thank care. Thank you, Peggy, okay. and thank you to KADY, too. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.